brothers and sisters, compliments of the season. And welcome to the final day of this special program. We have spent the past three days on intense prayer, and it, is been, it has been wonderful. Today is the final closing. The way we want to run today, we want to continue with the intense prayer program. Today, our focus is on ministration um, of the Holy Spirit. And I want us to start with the text, Hosea chapter 10, verse 12. So for yourselves, righteousness, reap in mercy, break up your fallow ground, for it is time to seek the Lord till he comes and rains righteousness on you, till he comes and rains righteousness on you. The context I want us to have today, it's again linking back to the three days intense prayer and fasting that many of us have undertaken as a way of seeking the Lord. And that we should know when we seek the Lord, the Lord will come to reign upon us, his Holy Spirit, to reign upon us, his righteousness, to sanctify us, to cleanse us, to purge us, to indeed show himself in our midst. Glory be to God. And so may the Lord reign upon us in this meeting. In Jesus' name, we want to start by looking at sanctification then. Sanctification. Let's look a little bit at sanctification. We, we, we did look at it, uh, touched on it yesterday and prayed. Ezekiel chapter 36, verses 26 through 27. I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Let me just add 28. Then you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. This was God speaking specifically to the children of Israel at that time. But it's still applicable to us. As I always say that the Old Testament of the Bible, not the Old Testament as the law. I hope I have made this distinction several times, and I hope it is clear to us. The Old Testament of the Bible provides a lot of um, examples and learning and principles of how one should really live in one's relationship with God. And also a lot of teachings. In fact, you would see that Jesus Christ often quoted Isaiah, Jeremiah, Psalms, quoted a lot. Same with Paul, same with Peter. So the scripture is one. But of course, there is a very specific aspect that is the law that has been abolished. I say it as bluntly as it is. But it does provide also a shadow of things, that's some learning that one can pick examples from. And so here, Ezekiel chapter 36 gives us a clearer understanding of sanctification, what it means. As we um, said it yesterday, stated it, sanctification is the remover, is a spiritual surgical operation that removes the nature of sin from one who has repented of his or her sins, has given his life or her life to Jesus Christ, and thereby has received the forgiveness of sins. And the Holy Spirit then comes in and transforms that life. Is that transformation we always talk about is sanctification is an experience that the individual will know and know that, number one, your sins have been forgiven. Number two, the nature of sin has been destroyed in your life. So we no longer become subject to the rudiments of the world. 
In fact, 1 John chapter 2, verse 16, makes it clear. He says, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life, they are not of the Father. They are of the world. And so, by the Spirit of God, the Spirit of God carries out this operation in us. Sanctify. So God sanctifies us with his spirit and cleanses us with the blood of Jesus, as we always say, and the word of God. From there, we are able to obey God. That is sanctification. So here we see in the book of Ezekiel 36, God himself said, I will put my spirit within you. So it is by the spirit and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will keep my judgments and do them. Then, oh, and do them, yes. He said, I will give you a new heart. I will give you, verse 20, he said, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. I will take the heart of stone out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. Take the heart of stone. So it is the remover of that nature of sin that is called a heart of stone, that attachment to the flesh that desires everything else contrary to what God desires. And that's why the Bible says in Romans chapter 8 that a carnal man cannot please God. A carnal mind or man. Romans chapter 8 verse 7, it says, because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. It's not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So one who is not sanctified cannot please God, cannot do the will of God, is a stubborn rebel against God. And that's what the world wants many of us to be today. That's why all the theories, unfounded um, theories of human rights against God. Human right is good. In fact, I say human fairness. We should be fair. That's what Jesus taught. Do unto others what you would want them to do to you. As I've often challenged the youths that I see so many youths empty, completely empty. Yeah, they are the ones all over the social media calling people, calling people out. And the key word in the amount is accountability, and yet they are accountable for nothing. Not in their personal lives, not in anything. Anyway, that's just a side comment. But let's go back to the point. It, it, that was to demonstrate the carnal mind. Carnal mind is a stubborn rebel against God. So what is needed is sanctification. Look at verse six with me, or let's start from verse five. For those who live, that's, I'm reading Romans chapter eight, please. Start from verse, For those who live according to the flesh, set their minds on the things of the flesh. But those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. For to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Then that seven came. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. So many people try to be holy by their own might and power. No, you submit to God through Jesus Christ and let the spirit of God sanctify you. And there are also people who refuse sanctification, even though they have given their life to Jesus. They choose to enjoy their own life. When I say enjoy, not necessarily that they enjoy. That is, for example, people who say, no, they cannot give up fornication. In fact, they start arguing, where is it in the Bible? Oh, they cannot give up masturbation. Where is it in the Bible? They themselves know this thing is a sin, but they want to hold on to it. So on one hand, they claim they are born again. They are pious. They are 
churchgoers, they do a whole lot of things, preach the Bible, but on the other hand, have refused to allow the Spirit of God to operate in them, operate upon them. Why is sanctification important? Number one, it is the only way to please God. And it is only those who please God that will make it, that God will take with him when Jesus comes to judge the world. Number two, it is the prelude, the prelude to manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit, manifesting the power of God. Please note these two points. It is the prelude to. So that's where many of us are limited. It is the prelude to, the mani to manifesting the spirit, the power, rather, the power of God. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 and 27, often read for um, husband and wife's counseling, but it holds a lot more. In fact, if you go to verse 32, you will see that Paul said that this was actually a mystery that he was talking about Christ and his church. That's what this is about. So Ephesians chapter 5 from verse 25. Husbands, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for her, that he might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the word, that he might present her to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but she should be holy and without blemish. So it is a sanctification, and it's Jesus by the Spirit, His Spirit, the Spirit of God, who sanctifies us, His church. It is His responsibility. What is our own responsibility? To submit to Him. When we submit to Him, when we say, Look, this thing in my life, this anger, let it go. Lord, help me. He, the spirit takes over and takes the anger away. So you're familiar with Galatians chapter 5 that I have talked about, mentioned. Please read from verse 16 all the way to uh, 23. To 23. Now, I said sanctification, I've told us the two important thing. That's why I want to pray the prayer of sanctification and then go into uh, ministering to us the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen. So let's do that first part. And the other one, we will just read the scriptures and then we will be praying. So to start with, let us just all go before the Lord. Take a look at your life. Take a look at yourself. As I take a look at my life and take a look at myself, you have seen, it's God himself who said, I will do this. All your, he requires from us is to just yield. What is that spiritual surgical operation that you want the Lord to perform in your life by his spirit? Go ahead and just tell him now, talk to God. Talk to God. Wherever you are, talk to God. Those that are connecting on Facebook, Talk to God. Tell him, Father, operate upon me now. Remove this anger from me. Remove this thing from me. Take it away. Take it away. Take it away. Sanctify me. Sanctify me. Make me holy. Make me holy, almighty God. Sanctify me the way I talk. Oh, let my words be full of grace, seasoned with salt, as the scripture advises, you know, salt makes the food have taste. That's what that scripture meant or means. Father, help me, help me, help me. Almighty God, sanctify me, sanctify me. In Jesus' name, we are prayed. Now we're going to pray that prayer together again. Say, pray with me. Say, Heavenly Father, we surrender ourselves again to you. We surrender our life to you, Jesus. 
according to your word in Ephesians chapter 5, verses 25 to 27. We ask, Lord Jesus, sanctify us, cleanse us with your spirit and with your word. Wash us with your precious blood. Transform our lives. Make us holy. Make us glorious. Make us without spot or wrinkle. Make us unblemished to you. Make us indeed your vessels of honor that you may use us for your glory. Sanctify me, Lord. Sanctify my brothers. Sanctify my sisters. Sanctify everyone here. In the mighty name of Jesus. Tell him, Lord, I will hold back nothing from you anymore. I will serve you with all my life. I will hold back nothing, nothing. You know, some people, they will say, you know, the flesh is weak. No, 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 no. The flesh is weak. That's why God sent the spirit. So the spirit will take over the flesh, transform us. Give up that habit. The grace of God is available, the spirit of God. So go ahead and tell him, Heavenly Father, pray with me again. Please, the areas of my weakness. Now go ahead and mention those areas of weakness. The areas of my weakness, Father God, weakness in rage, weakness in anger, weakness even in fear, Father, the areas of my weakness, weakness in lacking courage to stand up for you, weakness that I cannot carry the name of Jesus. And yet, Jesus, you said you will be ashamed of those who cannot stand up for you, who cannot carry your name. Father, Lord Jesus, please help me. Remove every area of my weakness. Remove it, remove it. Transform me, transform me. Where I am weak, please supply strength now. Supply strength, change my life. Remove whatever doesn't please you in my life. Remove it, sanctify me by the blood of Jesus, by the word of God, and by your spirit, in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. So we want to get into the Holy Spirit prayer side now. But let's take two key points. I want to talk to us on the power of waiting, the power of three days waiting, the power of three days waiting. So you see that Esther, in Esther chapter 4, uh, verses 15 and 17, when Esther wanted to change the situation of the Jews, that the hand of God will move to annul the evil decree that Haman has put against the Jews. Esther said, let us fast for three days and pray. Look at it, Esther chapter four. Uh, if you start from verse 15, then Esther told them to reply to Mordecai. 16, go gather the Jews who are present in Shushan and fast for me. Neither eat nor drink for three days, night or day. My mates and I will fast likewise. And so I will go to the king, which it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went his way and did according to all that Esther commanded him. That was Esther, and you know the story. The decree, evil decree was changed. And the heart of the king, which is in God's hand like rivers of water, was turned around, and the king favored Esther. We have waited for this three days, and I want you to learn this principle. As I told you, the scripture is from Genesis to Revelation, yeah? So not Old Testament, New Testament. Because then some people look at it, like, oh, Old Testament. No, it's the word of God and life principles. Now let's look at the example of Joshua. So we have waited and it is time for us to ask God to pour his spirit upon us, especially if you have yielded yourself for the spirit of God to sanctify you. You have made up your mind not to go 
into sin. Go back to those things. Look at the example of Joshua. When they wanted to cross the Jordan in Joshua chapter 1, Joshua chapter 1, verse 10. Then Joshua commanded the officers of the people, saying, Pass through the camp and command the people, saying, Prepare provisions for yourself, for within three days you will cross over the Jordan to go in to possess the land which the Lord your God is giving you to possess. John to chapter 3. Of that same Joshua chapter 3, and look at verses 2 and 3, then 5 to 7. Joshua chapter 3, look at that same continuation of this. Joshua 3 2. So it was after three days that the officers went through the camp and they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God and the priests, the Levites, bearing it, then you shall set out from your place and go after it. John to 5. And Joshua said to the people, sanctify yourselves. What? Sanctify yourselves for tomorrow the Lord will do wonders among you. Then Joshua spoke to the priest saying, take up the ark of the covenant and cross over before the people. So they took up the ark of the covenant and went before the people. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, after the people have been sanctified, see, the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God, which is the Holy Spirit in us. In today's, uh, uh, in this dispensation, the Holy Spirit present. Then God announced to Joshua in verse 7. And the Lord said to Joshua, this day I will begin to exalt you in the sight of all Israel that they may know that as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. This day, the Lord desire to manifest his power in you, to anoint you, like the Bible says, how God anointed Jesus, our Lord and Savior, our Master, the example for us, with the Holy Spirit and power who went about doing good, healing all those who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. And so Jesus said to us in Acts chapter 1, verse 8, Tarry ye. I think we have to read that scripture, so we'll pray. Tarry ye. The prayer won't be long, but you open your heart. And there are many people who still don't have the confidence of the power of the Holy Spirit that has been given to them. Look at Acts chapter 1. I think we won't rush it. We'll read it through because it's important. From verse 4. And being assembled together with them, he commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father, which he said, you have heard from me. That's right. For John truly baptized with water, but you shall be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Then jump to verse 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be witnesses to me in Jerusalem and in all Judea and Samaria and to the end of the earth. And you know what happened in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 to 4. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind, and it filled the whole house where they were sitting. That's how it will rush upon you, rush upon me in the name of Jesus. Three, then there, there appeared to them divided tongues as of fire, and one sat upon each of them, four, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. The Spirit of God will give you utterance to speak with other tongues today in the mighty name of Jesus. And you remember that while the people were confused, as some people will do when you speak in tongues, they say, ah, this one, the Spirit of God will give you utterance today in the name of Jesus. Peter, in verse 14, but Peter standing up with the 11, raised his voice and said to them, men of Judea and all who dwell in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and heed my words, for these are not drunk as you suppose, since it is only the third hour of the day. But this is what 
was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass in the last days, says God, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, on all flesh. So it is your portion, it is my portion. The same Acts chapter 2, if you jump all the way to verse 39, 38 and 39, see there again, then Peter said to them, repent and let every one of you be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. 39, for the promise is to, your, is to you and to your children and to all who are afar off, as many as the Lord our God will call. It is for you. Raise your voice, therefore, with me to heaven. Say, Heavenly Father, oh, baptize me afresh with your Holy Spirit and power. Go ahead. Father God, baptize me. Baptize me afresh with your Holy Spirit and power. Heavenly Father, baptize us, every one of us here, oh, as you did for the disciples. When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were in, in the upper room. They were all with one accord in one place. So are we here today. Father, baptize me. Baptize my brothers. Baptize my sisters with your Holy Spirit and power in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, go ahead and pray that prayer for yourself. Heavenly Father, baptize me. Oh, I, 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 feel, I feel the anointing of the Holy Spirit. As I've told us, I said, it's not by the feeling, but most times, most times, you will feel the sensation of the Spirit upon you. Sometimes your hand, your, uh, 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 your heart, your, your, your chest region, sometimes it depends on you. And as you begin to walk with the spirit, you will know sometimes just uh, in your ears, anywhere can be your whole body. Oh, sometimes you just feel him uh, around your back. You just feel the, the sensation, the heat that something extraordinary is happening. And sometimes when I feel that and I lay my hands on people, people that were just normal standing, you begin to see them shake. You begin to see them move. Go ahead and tell him, Heavenly Father, baptize me with your Holy Spirit and power. Lord Jesus, as you promised and as you have done, the same do for me now. Do for me now. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. The Lord, brothers and sisters, we receive the Holy Spirit by faith, especially for those who have prepared like we have prepared. And you can always keep doing this and keep doing this. And so pray with me again and say, Heavenly Father, pour your spirit upon me and my entire household. Pour your spirit upon me. Pour your spirit. Baptize me with your Holy Spirit and power. I and my entire household, my wife, my children, Lord God Almighty, wherever they may be, in their respective location, my entire family. Father, baptize me with your Holy Spirit and power and baptize my entire household. Go ahead, mention their names. Mention their names now. Go ahead, mention their names. Mention their names. Father, baptize me with your Holy Spirit and power and baptize my wife, Gloria. Baptize my daughter. Baptize my daughters. Baptize my son. Baptize my entire household. Oh, God Almighty. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Now, look at Acts chapter 4 with me. Because some people may be saying, I, I have received the Holy Spirit. So what's the point of repeating this? Oh, you need to keep renewing yourself in the Holy Ghost. Because after this last prayer, you're going to begin to speak in tongues. Don't hold back. Don't hold back. The Holy Spirit, you hear, he said, he will rain, he will pour his spirit upon us like rain. He will pour, he will come upon us, rain upon us, righteousness. That's the same way he rains his spirit upon us. As the spirit rains upon you like it happened in the house of Cornelius, don't hold back, don't hold back. We're going to just, so read with me Acts chapter 4, verse 31. So you see that we need to keep renewing ourselves in the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4, verse 31. And when they had prayed, remember these are the apostles. 
The disciples of the first century, in Acts chapter 2, they have already been baptized in the Holy Spirit and they spoke in tongues. But look at what happened in Acts chapter 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they were assembled together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the word of God with boldness. Open your mouth now and pray again. And we're going to pray for one another. This time is a prayer of agreement. Pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, we pray in the name of Jesus. In agreement, we ask, Lord, baptize us with your Holy Spirit and power. Baptize us with your Holy Spirit and power. Fill us afresh. Fill us afresh, Lord. Fill me. Fill my brothers and sisters, everyone that is connected upon this platform. And even those who will come to listen to this uh, uh, recording, Lord, this message, Father, fill us. Baptize us with your Holy Spirit and power in the name of Jesus. Go ahead and pray that prayer. Baptize me, baptize my brothers, baptize my sisters, baptize my household, baptize every one of us, Lord, now with your Holy Spirit and power. In Jesus' name, we are praying. The last prayer point on this now, my brothers and sisters. Make this very serious. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you all know the gifts of the Holy Spirit are listed. We want to pray now that power will manifest in you as the sanctified vessel of the Lord, as the vessel of gold. It is time for the spirit manifestation to be demonstrated in your life and in my life and in our lives. And after this, go ahead, pray for the sick, cast out devils, preach the gospel of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Raise your voice to heaven and pray with me and say, Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, we come to you in agreement. And we ask, oh God Almighty, let the gift of the Holy Spirit manifest in us now. All the gifts as recorded in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Let all and even much more manifest in my life, in the life of my brothers and sisters, in our family, in every one of us that is connected upon this program right now. Lord, pour out your spirit upon us and let the gifts of the Holy Spirit manifest in us. All the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus, Father, manifest in us by your spirit, the gift of word of wisdom. In the name of Jesus, manifest in us the gift of word of knowledge. Manifest in us the gifts of healings. Manifest in us the gift of working of miracles. Manifest in us the gift of prophecy. Manifest in us the gift of discerning of spirits. Manifest in us the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Manifest in us, Father God Almighty, all the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we have prayed. Amen. Now just go ahead and begin to speak in tongues. Receive the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, in the name of Jesus, the one who asked us, ask the Father for the Holy Spirit and he will give to you in my name. The one who said, I will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with power. In the name of Jesus. Father, pour your spirit upon us, baptize every one of us, and now let the Holy Spirit gift manifest in every one of us. Receive the gift of the Holy Spirit and receive the, mani the, 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 the confirmation and the enablement, the utterance, the unction of the Holy Spirit now. In the name of Jesus, sweet Holy Spirit, express yourself fully in the life of all these, your children, in my life and in their lives. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And let all say, amen. Now go ahead and just speak in tongues. Just speak in tongues for uh, uh, 30 seconds. Ramakushan tarabakule yeleke yele brande rigala brunde. Magumakuzan teke yele brundo. 
Marabaka la yi le brende rin daria maku la brando moko zen tereme e ye reveke ziri maku sharabaku la yi la kala yi le brende e rababa rababa rabu kulo brando romoko zen tere makala yi la brande e reke ye le brando rimaku raga ya gaya gala brande remeke ziri bakala yi la brunde reke ye le me e ye reboko zon toro boko zin tarabaka la yi la brande Rubaba ragaga ragaya le brende roboko zori makusharama mama in the name of Jesus Christ we are praying amen